Arya. You know, researchers have been trying to figure out how to label us. And there's a new classification that's come out. The International Association for the Study of Pain, a group of pain researchers, have now classified fibromyalgia as a nociplastic primary pain disorder. This was announced in the third International Virtual Congress on Fibromyalgia in June of 2021. This is a third category of the pain descriptors. The other two are nociceptive pain and neuropathic pain. Nociceptive pain describes pain due to inflammation and damaged tissues, while neuropathic pain describes nerve damage. So what is nociplastic pain? That's what I'd like to talk about today. Nociplastic pain is, quote, pain that arises from altered nociception despite no clear evidence of actual or threatened tissue damage causing the activation of peripheral nociceptors or evidence for disease or lesion of the somatosensory system causing the pain. So let's break that down. What is pain? Pain is defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. Nociceptive pain can feel sharp, throbbing, aching, and is usually described as actual damage to body tissue. So the definition continues saying altered nociception. Altered means simply put a change. So we have a change in how our pain is experienced. A nociception is the detection of painful stimuli. Our bodies must be able to identify when something painful is occurring on our body or in our body. For example, if a finger gets too close to the flame of a fire, you will feel a burning sensation which allows you to pull your hand back away from the flame. Because if you don't, your fingers kind of burn and that will cause significant damage to tissues. So the brain is doing its job. Therefore, nociception alerts us to potential danger. It continues, despite no clear evidence. Clear evidence in law means information that would persuade a reasonable person to have a firm belief that a proposition is more likely true than not true. In general, it means anything that you see, experience, read, or are told that causes you to believe that something is true or has really happened. So there's no clear evidence. Then it says, of actual or threatened tissue damage. The result of tissue damage involves pain, swelling, bruising, and actual damage to the tissue. So for example, the muscle could tear because it was overstretched or it could even rupture. Have you ever twisted your ankle and it swelled up and turned red? 
that's the kind of thing that this is describing. And it says, causing the activation of peripheral nociceptors. Peripheral means on the edge of something or on the surface. This refers to the activation of a noxious stimulus, which can be an internal physical change or an external one. So one example is pinching your skin. It may not cause actual tissue damage, but could cause pain. Simply put, noxious means something that can potentially cause harm to the body and it can potentially cause pain or damage. So peripheral nociceptors are sensory neurons that extend into the peripheral nervous system. Doctors can't find a peripheral explanation for our pain. For example, there wasn't enough pathology on an x-ray to explain it. So, they might dismiss us as having a psychological problem. And then it says, or evidence for disease or lesion of the somatosensory system causing the pain. Basically, this means that a disease is not detectable based on scans, blood work, or some other test such as a biopsy. The somatosensory system begins in the skin, joints, ligaments, muscles, and fascia. This system informs us when objects touch us and through the position and movement of our body through stimulation of our muscles and joints. So nothing is detectable in those areas. And so Tesla has decided to join us because he's getting into everything. I don't, I don't know where he finds this stuff. I mean, you're just into everything, aren't you? <laughs> so what does this mean to us? With all of the research so far, one thing that stands out to these researchers is that in large part, Fibro is caused by brain neuroplasticity. We've all heard that fibro is a neurobiological disease that affects our sensory processing system. There's no inflammation or damage to our joints and brain imaging has shown it's a disorder of the central nervous system. When researchers compared the brains of people with fibromyalgia to healthy people, there are structural differences in those with fibro. But how does this new term help us? Neuroplasticity is the change of brain structure and function throughout the lifespan in response to experience. So whatever we think, feel and do influences our neuronal connections in real time. All humans and animals with neurons adapt to changes in their circumstances. And I put a link to the article that covers this below. Neuroplasticity can help us function better or worse. Basically, researchers have found that we have a hyperactive pain processing in the brain and spinal cord. Our persistent pain is created when the brain senses danger. And in this article that I've linked below, she states the following. The brain is prone to error when assessing danger. The brain builds and strengthens pathways that support its belief, whether it's correct or not. And all brain pathways can be altered by our choices of thoughts, feelings,
feelings and behaviors. Now I've never been more excited about the brain before and what's occurring with fibromyalgia. But let's continue. There's a great TED talk on this with humor. And I put a link to it in the description. Pain is a construct of the brain. So how does this help us? According to these researchers, nosoplastic pain can be reversed. There are specific strategies that can be done to reverse these changes. Neurons cannot do two things at once. Once they fire, they need time to prepare to fire again. If the brain is busy creating pain, it can't generate the activities that make life worth living. So, if you busy yourself with activities that engage you like uplifting thoughts, feelings, and activities that you enjoy, the brain can't process pain at the same time. Researchers Moskowitz and Golden state that in order to reverse nosoplastic pain, we can do the following things. We've talked about some of these things on this channel. Try soft touch. Take a warm bath. Well, I've already said a million times how much I love my warm bath. Do gentle movements or physical touch with a loved one. Exercise. It distracts the brain from pain and the emotional impact of that pain. Use imagery. Think about the brain cooling down and becoming less fiery. Or imagine something awesome like a waterfall or whatever makes you smile. Remind yourself that persistent pain serves no purpose. Use calming scents like peppermint, if you like that smell. I've been lighting candles around my house and I'm figuring out which one of those aromas that I really like. Or you could use a diffuser with a scent that you love. I would love to be able to walk without pain. So I am going to implement some of these things in my life. Wouldn't it be wonderful to do some of the things that you once enjoyed? People with migraines, IBS, arthritis, bladder pain syndrome, and many more could have a better quality of life. Not just those of us with fibromyalgia. And this term could help with treatment plans if we follow the guidelines that I just stated. But I think time will tell. For now, let's give it a try. I hope you learned something. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. This is a third category as a pain descriptor. <laughs> For example, if a finger gets too close to uh, the flame, uh, so what is narcissism? A reasonable comfort. Rotten. I have certainly no.